Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and here's another edition of Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, the Herbert Erpaderpinist series about asking Herbert Erpaderp's questions. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Before we get to the questions, as I mentioned last fortnight, has it really been two whole weeks already? Apparently, yes. Anyway, last fortnight I mentioned that I have become an affiliate with Warlord Games, and that is still true. They posted the other night that they've been able to reopen with a skeleton crew, which apparently isn't as skeleton-y as one might assume. So now, if you're after some Warlord stuff to add to your stash, and during this whole thing, who doesn't want to have a nice stash? My affiliate link is in the description, and it would be awesome if you were to use that when purchasing from Warlord. I have made videos about a lot of their stuff in the past, so why not go back and check those out if you want to have a look at some of their kits. Okay, so now let's get to the questions. First, Oktoberfest said, Isn't it odd how your most successful video has nothing to do with models? To be fair, who doesn't want to see baby mice? That's the thing though, isn't it? Who doesn't want to see baby mice? Even people who don't like baby mice and get all angry and try to be edgy in the comments watch that video, and I don't really think it's an odd thing. Modeling is kind of a niche thing. It does upset overly serious modelers when you say things like that, but it is true. It's not a dying hobby as some might say, but it's also not something every man and his dog does. If anybody knows of a dog that builds models I would really enjoy seeing that. Or just a regular dog. Show me your dogs. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, while a lot of people do like models, even I think they're pretty good, many more like small animals and I would imagine that there are millions more searches using keywords like mice, mouse, cute, animal, etc. than anything model related. Also, maybe not super obviously, but my channel is not strictly about models. Same goes for my Discord. A lot of people seem to make that mistake. It's really more of a whatever Herbert feels like doing channel, that just happens to mostly be modelling. All that said though, it would be pretty amazing if my modelling videos did nearly as well as that baby mice video. You could help me there by sharing my videos in appropriate places. Another question from Oktoberfest. If you could only build models from one company, which company would it be and why? That sounds kind of miserable, really. Though I guess if I was forced to choose, I might pick Tamiya. Tamiya has a huge range of models, most of which I haven't already built. They also offer more than one scale, and their quality is pretty consistently good. That said, only ever building Tamiya kits doesn't really appeal to me, and I would likely quit the hobby fairly quick. Maybe it would be okay if I was being paid enough. Though I almost certainly wouldn't sign a contract that forbade me from building models from more than one company. Trekan Belovich said, Because you're not being a fan of painting figures, what's more a pain in the ass? Painting 15mm figures or 28mm figures? I guess it depends. Mostly on how much detail you want in the figures. Obviously 28mm is going to be more detailed than 15mm, but you can get away with a lot of simplification on 15mm figures and still have them look pretty good, at least from a distance. And 15mm models are generally meant to be viewed at a distance. On the other hand, if you do try to paint a lot of detail on a 15mm figure, they can be much more annoying to do than larger figures. I think I would prefer to paint 28mm scale figures really, though not by much. They're not the same thing, but I do see them as kind of comparable. Redneck Rusky said, Well, the first part is a perfect time to remind people not to have conversations in the Ask a Herbert Erpaderp channel. Also, I'm unlikely to share models from there, because people seem to see that as a way to have their models on Ask a Herbert Erpaderp. That's not how it works. Anyway, the question is, why does Herbert not paint his models? which was actually answered on Discord, but I have seen more than a couple of comments about this on YouTube lately, including one that was unreasonably abusive, and that person's comment went straight into the bin. I doubt any of those commenters would bother watching Ask a Herbert Herbert Herbert, but it would be nice if people would look through my past videos before just assuming that I don't paint. There is usually a painting video every month or so. There are reasons for them being less frequent, the main one being that I'm not a fast painter. Also, sometimes I don't want to paint, and sometimes there's just no time. I do usually put out more than one video a week. 
I'm not trying to say that's the hardest or worst thing in the world, in fact it's something I enjoy, but it does take a significant amount of time and work. I'm not especially interested in busting my ass to get more painting videos out, because, well, it's kind of a poor use of time really. I don't take YouTube stats that seriously, but they do tell me that people are just not as interested in my painting videos. I mean, none of my videos perform super well, at least not right away, and they do slowly build in views over time, so they're kind of evergreen, but it is pretty clear that painting videos get far fewer views than build videos. They also take a bit longer to make, and require slightly more effort in editing. Why would I do more work for less reward? And it would be work. Painting more than I feel like doing, or going at a pace that exceeds what I find to be enjoyable, is a great way to burn out. Not really interested in doing that. Some people have even suggested combining build and paint videos, every week. Sure, maybe you've got infinite time, or don't value your time, but my time is not infinite, and I do value it, so that's just not going to happen. This is definitely something for that FAQ that I've been meaning to do. Martin Gotham said, Have you kitbashed before? I have. I think the best example is my Battle Beetle video, where I made a post-apocalyptic shooty car from a beetle kit. Good times. I definitely have plans for more of that kind of thing, and I have a truck kit sitting around just for that. I'll be starting on that sometime this year. Trekan Belovich said, Do you do the needed filling of gaps on each model when you want to paint it, or do you have a filling day to do the filling on several models? I guess both, in a way. I don't exactly schedule a filling day, but if a model that I want to prime needs filling done on it, I'll do that and then pick a couple of other things that need some putty work and start on those afterwards. At least if I'm using something like green stuff that you have to mix up, which is almost always the case. It's a way to avoid wastage really. I might mix up a bit more than I actually need for a particular project, and rather than just letting it set and go to waste, might as well use that for something else, right? Even if I don't plan on painting it soon. Skeletor said, How do you set a rivet counter on fire? You don't, partly because setting people on fire is usually wrong, but also because they tend to spontaneously combust when somebody doesn't care that the bolts on their model are half a scale millimeter out of place, or you dare to paint something in a colour other than the one they've decided is right. In the YouTube comment section of last fortnight's Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, Yan Tima said, Which airbrush do you use? And where do you spray it? A box? This is probably another one for the FAQ, but I've got an Iwata HPC Plus, and a cheaper no brand one that I found on Amazon, which has a 0.5mm needle. I look at that one as my workhorse. A bigger needle size is good for priming, base coating and clear coats, which are really my primary uses for an airbrush. And I spray into a portable spray booth, which you can see in my painting videos going back probably more than a year now. The booth isn't branded, but there are a lot of very similar booths available for a range of prices, so if you're looking for one definitely shop around. I used to use a cardboard box and a fan, but a proper booth with a hose that you can connect to your window is definitely a better idea. Rock Strongo said, Why didn't you answer my question? You must be a pussy ass bitch. Nowhere have I said that I would answer absolutely all questions. If you asked better questions without being shitty, they might get answered. When YouTube automatically holds them for review, they're either bad questions, or the way you've asked them is just garbage. So I don't feel bad about clicking that remove button. And that's it for the questions this fortnight. Let's check out some of the modelling work that's been shared on my Discord server in the last couple of weeks. As always, not everything is shared, so to see everything, take part in discussion, and share your own work if you want, head on over to Discord. There's a link in the description. First up, the Tourette's Gamer shared this Whippet tank, which is complete with mock asbestos around the exhausts. The Tourette's Gamer built this to look like the one at the tank museum, and so it's pretty clean with only minor weathering. I think this is pretty good, and it is nice to see models with different levels of weathering. Not everything has to be maximum dirt all the time. This particular whippet is in 135th scale by Meng. I have actually been thinking about picking up this kit myself. It is an interesting looking tank, and this one has been done very nicely. 
Here's another clean looking tank. Major General Bunk has finished painting this Ravel T3476. This is Bunk's first ever model with edge highlighting. The idea was to make it look like the tank has just rolled into action for the first time. The edge highlighting does make the details pop quite a bit. It's simple but effective. Good work. M4 Valentine has finished the Rubicon 156 scale BA3 armoured car. This has been painted up very well, obviously, for a Hungarian force. It's always nice to see something other than the usual main forces from World War II. Or anything really. I guess I just like seeing the less common things. Anyway, this is really well done. And I kind of forgot that Rubicon even made this kit. Definitely keen on getting one myself. In this last picture we can see the entire Hungarian force so far. I hope that I'm right in assuming that means it's going to grow. I'm looking forward to that. Smoes shared this Spitfire FR Mark XIV, or 14. I don't know much about Spitfires or their various marks, but I do believe that FR stands for Fighter Reconnaissance. This very nicely painted model is a 148th scale kit from Airfix, so it's probably fairly big. Either way, it's really nice looking work. Trekan Belovich shared this Ferdinand, which is looking very nice with this camo scheme. The model is the Zvezda 15mm scale snap kit, which I know to be quite a good little kit. This looks very good, and it kind of makes me want to paint my own Ferdinand. Very cool. Mr. Plays 87 shared this Nazi zombie. I have no idea of the model's scale or manufacturer, but it looks awesome and is certainly very well painted. The camo is excellent, and I really like the bite marks that have been taken out of this guy. Fantastic work. Monol has shared this excellent Panzer 5 IV, which is clearly the combination of a Panther hull and a Panzer IV turret. The real one was used as a command vehicle, the one in World of Tanks is used as a ramming vehicle, and unsurprisingly, Monol's one has been built and painted very well. I really enjoy seeing the changes that Monol makes to his tanks. Very nice work as always. And that's it for the modelling this fortnight, and indeed for the entire episode of Ask a Herpaderpaderp. Normally there might be some art, or perhaps pets here, and it has been a little while since I've done that, but I'm just plain exhausted, so perhaps next fortnight. Like I said earlier, show me your dogs, or obviously any other pets you've got. Let me see your pets. As always, a big thank you to everybody who shared their modelling work in Discord, even if it hasn't been shared here. Also, thank you to everybody for your questions, and of course those who watch my videos. Ask a Herpaderpaderp will return in two weeks, and there should be a painting video on Monday. If you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, and all of those other call to action things that people put at the ends of their videos. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.